Hey up everybody, welcome back to the Audi Cycling YouTube channel where today I'm going to be doing a guide for the Tour de France's official fantasy game. I did one of these last year and I realised that last year's video was getting some traction on YouTube again, but of course that guide is out of date so I started to feel a bit guilty so I'm going to be doing another one for this year and it's worth noting that this year's competition is probably one of the harder ones which the Tour has made. Usually you could pick a load of good high quality riders. That is not going to be the case this year. It is uh, going to require a lot more thinking so therefore a guide is going to be a lot more useful to you. I would say that what we're going to be doing first is talking about the sort of organisation of when you should be making transfers in this race uh, and we're going to be taking a look at the scoring system as well and then we're also going to be talking about kind of bargain riders the cheap riders that you can fill out your team with and what kind of things you should be looking for in riders so with that all out of the way like i said we're going to talk about the organization of how you want to try and select your riders so what i would recommend is that take a look at the uh, the profiles which you can find uh, down here in the bottom right of the website so i would wrong, strongly recommend you look at those what i would suggest is that because you can't have a lot of expensive riders on your team anymore i would say that you don't want any sprinters on your team to start with because you want to try and make the most of the first two punchy stages which will likely be won by guys like Wout Van Aert, Tade Pogaccia, Matthew Van Der Poel, Tom Pidcock and people like that. You want to try and stack those riders in as much as you can and then I would likely swap those riders out when you hit the sprint stages at stage three and I would probably keep the sprinters in until probably stage 11 and then you have a big period in the third week where there's going to be lots of mountain stages where I would keep the sprinters out of your team put in a load of the GC riders the guys for the breakaway and then what the sprinters potentially back in at about stage 18 or so but guys who you might want to keep in your team for the whole time would include guys like Tade Pogaccia uh, Wout Van Aert you might want to keep in your team for the whole time as well but outside of that I would probably say that a lot of the riders you could probably swap out now we're going to talk about the scoring system so you can find the way that the stages are scored by going to the bottom right into game rules where you can find the scoring kind of breakdown so you get quite a lot of points for of course winning the stage 200 and then it kind of slowly deteriorates down but you do still get points for 81st to 100th on the stage so we'll be trying to pick riders who can fulfill into that category as well and then you get intermediate sprint points you get mountains classification points and the most combative rider of the day and then you get these points for the end at the end of each stage as well based upon riders rankings in each individual competition of course you get the super combative rider prize at the end so you might want to try and gauge who is going to be the most combative rider on say stage 20 and bring them into your team because then you'll get 150 bonus points at the end of it which is quite a lot to be uh, to be bringing in considering that's equivalent to finishing second on a stage as shown over here to gauge that if you're not somebody who's very kind of in the know in the Tour de France look at somebody who's been in the breakaway a lot look at somebody who is potentially French they do quite like to pick French riders as well and look for somebody who maybe you know if they haven't won a stage but they've been up there quite a lot of times maybe they can go then but it's generally riders who go in the breakaway an awful lot it's also worth noting that these points on screen here except for the super combative prize are all multiplied by five and those are added on as like an end of tour bonus on stage 21 so it's probably worthwhile putting in guys who are up there in GC and maybe up there in uh, all the other competitions to try and get as many points at the end there as possible. It's a lot to kind of think about and a lot to go through but I will try and keep this video a little bit shorter just be sure to put those end to keep those end of tour points in mind. There's also a bonus question which they which they put on which is for the TT which is on stage 16 I believe. I think you guess the time and however close you are you gain points and you use those points to make transfers. I have 400 points and it's a, it's a 50 points per transfer. This is the team which I have at the moment. Just before I go diving into sort of a rider list, I've gone with Pogatra as my GC guy for the moment. I reckon he'll probably be in, be in here for the whole race, but he's very good. He's a very strong puncher as well, so he'll probably do well on stages one and two as well. Batman Art similarly will do well on stages one to four because he is uh, really good at climbing but sprinting as well. So I think Wattman Art is a real good choice. Almost just somebody who could just keep him there for the whole time. Pidcock is a favourite for stages one and two, but then I intend to take him out on stage three. Binyam Mai 
is also might survive stage one, more expected to survive stage two, but then is a sprinter who could contest a green jersey. So he'll be in there for quite a lot of a race as well. And then I've got these guys who are filling out the lower point categories. And the main thing which I'm going for is that Corbin Strong, uh, Matthew Dingham, and also Maxine Van Hills are, are all eligible for the white jersey competition, which I think is quite important because there aren't a lot of riders who are eligible for that competition this year. And therefore, when you get to the end of each stage, you get these extra points for based upon their position. So even if they are seventh or so in this competition, which is going to be relatively easy to do, considering that these guys are quite good at climbing, they get an additional nine points. And it's just those little things which you might want to pick up on. Take a look at guys who are also in that white jersey competition because you can gain a few little extra points. And I've gone with Tahada because he's a very good climber. But speaking of riders, let's go and take a look firstly at some of the more expensive riders. And then I'll go and down and uh, pick out some riders who I think you could be putting on your team throughout this race. So all these guys on the front page are all good picks, to be honest with you, except for maybe Enrique Mass. I'd stay away from. He's a little bit questionable as to whether he's a good choice. But Pedersen, Gronewegen, Philipson and Jakobsen, these are all the strongest sprinters in the race. Philipson and Pedersen are sprinters who, who are better climbers. Jakobsen and Gronewegen generally don't climb very well. So Philipson and Pedersen might be a bit better in terms of being able to contest some more difficult sprints. So you might be minded to pick these guys instead just because they will also do well on the flat stages but might pick you up some, some bonus points on some more difficult stages. Pagatra and Vingegaard are the GC favourites and then Wout Art and Matthew Van Der Poel are also very good. I would say that Wout Van Aert is a better choice than Van Der Poel because Wout Van Aert is more likely to get involved in the bunch sprints. Uh, Matthew van der Poel generally doesn't do that because he's supporting Jasper Philipsen. Pidcock is good for the first two stages and then some breakaways, but he is quite expensive for uh, somebody who probably won't be going for GC too much. Then you have sort of the second tier GC favorites like a Godou, uh, Hindley, Ben O'Connor, etc. Adam Yates as well. So you can go for them as well. Um, it's also worth noting, I think there's a, there's a limit on the number of riders you can have. So you can only have a certain number of green riders. So you could pick Adam Yates, who's classified as a climber, even though he is a GC rider. So that's a little sneaky trick you could use there as well. We're getting down a little bit cheaper. You might want to pick some cheaper sprinters. Guys like Christoph and Caleb Ewan will still do quite good. Uh, if you can't afford a Jakobsen or a, a Philipsen, for example. Some really good breakaway riders like Ciccone, Mike Woods, uh, Dylan Turns. These are all good breakaway riders. Biniam Gamay is also not classified as a sprinter, even though he is a sprinter. So that's another sneaky thing that you could try and take advantage of there. You also have other sprinters like Mayus is going to be the key sprinter for Bora, so he could be a good one for you to be picking. Then we're getting a little bit uh, cheaper now. These guys are all relatively expensive but might not do too much so i would try and stay away as much as you can from these area from this area wellsford is is a good sprinter for 13 credits i would say that he is perhaps an exception in this area he could definitely do something felix gal is in the white jersey competition could do very well in this competition at the end of the race so keep an eye out on him and then moving into some more cheaper riders we're getting towards like 11 points or so bargiel has won the polka dot jersey in the past and therefore might be one who you want to look towards to go into the breakaway. You have Aram Baru who could do very well on the first two stages. Fred Wright is good in the breakaways. He's the recent British champion. There's also Mezgech who will be the lead up man for Groenewegen but he's a better climber than Groenewegen so he might get some top tens when the stages get a bit harder. More Kuv sometimes sneaks into the top 10 because he is the lead up man of Fabio Jakobsen so he can get you some good points for somebody who's nine stars that's pretty good value as well I skipped over Maxi Van Hills Van Hills is a good one to begin with because he is in the white jersey and will do very well in the first two stages so he's one which I really like the look of Hugo Hall won a stage last year so he could very well do the same thing again so it's seven star riders I currently have I, I think Aincorn could get him a breakaway I think that Corbin Strong is in the white jersey competition, which is why I have him, which is why I have him in on my team. I think that he, for seven stars, could do very well over the first few stages. So, and if even if not, he'll be up there in the white jersey competition. And then into the six star riders, there's Beermans, who's sort of a sprinter for RK Samsic. Nick Schultz did very well in a stage last year, finished second place in a stage, so he could be another one. Anthony Perez 
did very good at the French Championships and he's only six stars. He usually gets him a breakaways quite a lot. And then for five star riders, I've got Dingham because five he's five stars. He will probably, he's one of the better climbers on DSM and he will therefore be up there in the white jersey competition as well. Renard is in the white jersey competition as well and Nicky Sarn, uh, Nicky Sarn is the leader man for Bauhaus. So you might want to uh, pick Nicky Sarnt if Phil Bauhaus leaves the race. Of course, uh, there's also the thing where you need to assign the stage winner bonus. So when you click on a rider like that, they get the stage winner bonus, which means that their points are doubled. So rather than getting 200 points for winning the stage, they will instead get 400 points. So it's very important that you come back at the end of each stage and pick a new stage winner bonus for the next stage. Because if you don't do that, there will be no chance that you will finish high up in the leaderboards. If the kind of stage winner bonus thing is too much for you and you can't really be bothered to set one each day and you would prefer a fantasy game where you just set a team and you just forget about it but i would strongly recommend that you go and check out velo games that is another fantasy cycling website that i use very frequently i have a guide up for it already it's one you know i use velo games all the time i i really really love it i think it's a great format so if you prefer a sort of set and forget format to your team then absolutely go check out velo games i've got a league for it and everything check out the channel because uh, there are guides up there to try and help you to pick the best teams possible there but that is my guide for the official tour de france game if you have any questions put them in the comments down below i will also try and remember to put the league code and how to get into it and stuff into the description of the video but all that is left to say is to stay safe out there and i'll see you in the next video salut